Welcome back into the postgame show on this Wednesday afternoon. You know, this could be a candidate. Elijah and I earlier uh, this summer were going to settle in on a show theme song. It'll be something that's out there in the world. We're not going to write something. Oh, no. I'm not that gifted. But uh, yeah, Black and Blue by Van Halen was uh, my old show's theme for a long time. And I let our current PD just say, yeah, we're just going to have some bumps. And I just, you know, I humored him. Right. I'm a nice guy. But and I like a top of the hour, every hour yeah, theme. A theme. So it could be Happy by Pharrell and Daft Punk and Nile Rodgers. Yeah. I don't know what Mitch Light thinks. Uh, well, you know, Mitch, uh, maybe not a, like a walk-up song, but, well, you know, what what would your walk-up song be if you had one, like, coming to work every day? Well, I'm going to answer the – I'm not going to answer the question I was asking. I'm going to answer the question that I, I want to answer. Okay. I'm going to say for Elijah's show, from what I know about him, the show, in, it should be Freebird. I think every hour, oh, just yes. let it go. Okay. Seven minutes. You know, I know that's eating into some probably advertising time and callers, whatever, but just give me seven minutes of free bird before Elijah gets on the on the air. I yes. See, I'm here for that because I'm yes. a jam band guy. I don't know that Skinner is full on jam band. Live, Skinner could play, man. There's no doubt about that. They they could go. But I am, uh, Mitch, a full on jam band guy. So I, seven minutes is short, dude. I'll air guitar the entire thing, too, on the video stream. <laughs> yeah. Hair's coming down. Like, yeah, it's I, I, the full thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, 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 we watched Elijah grow up here in Nashville, and there was a free bird. He's soaring over there in, in Columbia, South yeah. Carolina. Yeah, so right. I'm, I'm here for it. It's I, birds I, you cannot I, change. I am here for that. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm here for it. Uh, Mitch, we, we talked to you about a month ago, and, and South Carolina was playing our – maybe it wasn't quite a month ago, was it? They were they were kind of feeling like they were getting towards – not life support, obviously, but – Dire it, it was getting It was getting dicey. I guarantee. Yeah, it was getting dicey. Yeah, so, it was before the tour – yeah, it was before the Tennessee series, yeah. I think, and I guaranteed. Um, and it was funny, I was at the SEC tournament um, for the first two days, and I was sitting next to some of the guys from D1 Baseball, and I was like, you know, I don't do a lot of college baseball stuff on media, but I was on with a guy I know in South Carolina, and I just guaranteed, no doubt about it, they were going to make it. And I think it was, who South Carolina playing the opener? I forgot. Bama. Um, whatever the, yeah, well, I don't know if they were down or whatever, and I was just like, hopefully that never comes there again. <laughs> baseball NIT or whatever like that. But my Gamecocks rallied, no doubt about it. And that's the funny thing. I mean, I'm getting ahead, but we had four, we had five quote unquote bubble teams, and four of the five were number two seeds. Yeah. So like, you know, they, they all they all did enough, obviously. Well, and that committee clearly uh, valued RPI and strength of schedule, which obviously factors into the RPI, Mitch. But but it, it it's I mean Florida got in. Let, let's and and they and the committee you know Matt Hogue basically said number one strength of schedule was was the was the tipping point. Yeah, I mean I was a big proponent of Florida in all five SEC teams getting in. I'm not a I'm trying trying not to be an SEC homer. It's the league I watch the most and it's the best league by far and we all know this. I mean, they played thirty five games against teams in an NCAA tournament. They went fourteen and twenty one, which is a good record for a bubble team. Like if you were if you if it wasn't Florida, weren't Florida, it was like a, a team from, you know, a mid major conference. First of all, they wouldn't play that many games, but if they had that winning percentage against teams in the tournament, you'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. And they also played 18 games against top eight seeds, going 7 and 11. So I don't, as long as they met the over 500 criteria, which they did, I didn't really see a scenario in which they'd be left out. Um, and they weren't. So again, you don't want to live on the edge like they did. They survived. Um, but they're clearly one of the best, whatever, 35, 40 teams, whatever that at-large cutoff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they certainly lived on the edge all right. But Tennessee, you know, running through the SEC tournament despite losing the first game that earns them the number one overall seed in this tournament, which has always been bittersweet news for the teams that have gotten it since Miami won the whole thing. I believe that was in, what, 99, 98? Uh, when they won yeah. it. But no yeah. Number, yeah. yeah, and no number one overall seed has won it since then and the last time tennessee was number one overall they had one of the best hitting lineups in the history of the sport and didn't even make it to omaha so what are some of the reasons that this team mitch can win the national championship and buck that trend or one of the reasons that they will find themselves being in line of every team since that miami team that has been the number one overall seed and has fallen short of a title well the obvious reason why they can is that lineup it's just ferocious um and there's just so many guys who can hurt, hurt, hurt you in so many different ways. Um, 
So, and, and their pitching is good. It's not elite. I know from, I think we talked about this last time, from a statistical standpoint, you look at it and you say it's, it's pretty elite because they're like second or third in the SEC and ERA. So the things that would concern me, Elijah, about them winning it all would be not having that true ace. Like, you know, in the, if you get to Omaha and what was it, the Skeens versus uh, uh, Louder last year from Wake and you got the one nothing game, 2-1 game, you know, I know Tennessee's guys are capable, but they don't have on paper that one true ace. And I think what, what you see when you get teams go to Omaha, now it's not quite like it was in the mid-2010s, you know, when no one was hitting home runs, but it's a pitcher-friendly park, and you can't, you can't live and die by the home run. They're not going to be playing. They'll be playing the first two rounds uh, in Knoxville, but they won't be playing the College World Series there. So that would be my concerns, the lack of elite pitching at the top and the reliance on home runs. But, uh, you know, they're going to have trouble. You know, if Wake Forest gets out of East Carolina – that Wake Forest versus Tennessee Supers, assuming Tennessee wins, will be unbelievable drama with the potential. Well, we'd see a Chase Burns versus Tennessee matchup, which would be incredible. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are pulling for that. Mitch Light of the Athletic is with us here talking uh, NCAA baseball tournament. Kentucky, Georgia, A&M, Arkansas are the other SEC schools that are uh, top eight national seeds. Which of them are you most concerned about, and which of them do you think, uh, yeah, punch the ticket already to Omaha? Kentucky. I'm a little concerned about Kentucky, and I'm trying not to be just like, oh, it's Kentucky. They're not a name brand, um, you know. So I don't, you know, they haven't done it. So I'm therefore not going to pick them. They had some big series wins down the stretch, no doubt about it. But their pitching wasn't great. I meant to look this up. I don't have it. I remember Chris Burke saying it in the the, the last day of the regular season of the Vanderbilt Kentucky game, and he was just like, should we be concerned about Kentucky's pitching? Like he threw out the stat. It was like in half of their last. 10 SEC games, they've given up 10 runs or more. Mm -hmm. So, like, their pitching hasn't been great. Um, so that would be my concern there. So I'm, I'm publishing my predictions tomorrow. I haven't made them all. I do, like, kind of a capsule by cap, or region by region picks. And I think I might pick Indiana State in that one. Um, the one I feel really good about is Texas A&M. I know they struggled down the stretch a little bit. It's funny. They lost two of their last three SEC series, but the one series they won was Arkansas. And they went 0-2 in, in, in Hoover. But I think when they're right, like they were midseason, they have the best combination of pitching and hitting. And one, I think the most valuable thing you can have in college baseball, even maybe more so than that number one ace, is the shutdown reliever who can go five, six innings, uh, like Kevin Copps at Arkansas a couple years ago. Like and Chris Cortez has been that guy for them. Um, I think I've seen – there might be the betting favorites now over Tennessee in some sites. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like I'm – you know, uh, that's not a hot take, but I really like Texas A&M. And then last year, I think my, one of my favorite parts about the entire postseason was Oral Roberts making that run to the College World Series. And Oral Roberts is back in it as a four because, you know, by virtue of winning that conference. But what's the most dangerous three or four seed that you can see making some noise maybe to a super regional or, you know, heaven forbid, punching a ticket to Omaha and kind of being this year's ORU? James James Madison and Bryant. No, I just said that because they're in Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well played. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I actually did look. James Madison, I didn't know a ton about them. But those, and you guys have probably talked a little bit, but those guys can hit. They yeah. can't really pitch. Um, some of their pitching stats are kind of alarming, but they can hit. I mean, okay, here's a really boring answer for a number three seed. I know that's not really what you mean, but, you know, you look at Florida as a three seed. Yeah. That's a pretty talented uh, uh, three seed. You know, a couple of the four seeds stand out. Penn, I think they went down to Auburn, was it last year, and, and won a game. Um, Grand Canyon's a four seed in Tucson, and Grand Canyon won two out of three from Arizona, the top seed. Now, they were midweek games, and those aren't really true barometers of how you're going to do in the postseason because your pitching doesn't line up like a weekend. But, uh, you know, a lot of people who know a lot more than me are, are pointing to Tucson being the, the toughest regional. I think part of it is because Grand Canyon does not look like an easy out in a 1-4 matchup. Yeah, and Dallas Baptist is really good. I don't know how good Arizona is. I, I think that's when they won the Pac-12, and, I mean, we know they have a history uh, in this sport, but – uh, I, I would agree. And, and I you know, I'm with you, Mitch. Nebraska won the Big Ten tournament. Oklahoma State's at home. And we know they're uh, historical generational baseball power. But if I'm the Cowboys and the Cornhuskers, I'm like, are you serious? You sent bleep in Florida to play us like that? I'd be really worried. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's two scenarios for Florida. Like one is they go 0 and 2 and like, OK, that's why. Or the other is like they're playing for the national championship. But, um, you know, Nebraska is a sneaky good team. I didn't know a ton about them. 
uh, and then I did a little research for my capsules. You know, their ace, this guy Brett Sears, leads the nation in whip at .810, which is really, really low. He's only walked 18 batters in 99 innings. So that is a t- – assuming he'll pitch – Friday. That's a really tough opening match, uh, opening uh, pitcher for Florida to go against. So, you know, you, you figure if they get by that, they're in pretty good shape. But that is going to be I'm – re- I'm really looking forward to see how Florida comes out this weekend. Uh, do you buy – I got about a minute left here. Do you buy into the conspiracy theories that many that follow the sport are projecting that uh, Coastal is only in because their AD chairs the committee? Uh, it's hard to debunk that theory when their head coach, and I didn't hear the audio. I know I just saw people reference it. I looked for it like after they lost in the championship or the, in the tournament basically was resigned to the fact that they weren't getting in. Mm. Um, so if the coach doesn't think they're getting in and most people that follow this and do the bracketology every week, don't think they're getting in. I don't know. Conspiracies. I'm usually not conspiracy theorists, but it seems a little fishy. And I mean, obviously great career for Gary Gilmore. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's just you, you got to get on your own merits, and I think he'd be the first to tell you that. Yeah, no, nah, it's 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 an interesting storyline. Mark Etheridge of D1 said on their podcast the other day, Mitch. Uh, well, you know, some media guys were saying that you got to leave the room, and then Mark said, "But they got to come back." And so I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I, I heard that. Yes, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Right. It's not like they don't come back. Yeah, you know, that's so. right. I thought it's that not was like good. they found out later that, yeah, that yeah. they got in. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, appreciate it as always, man. Good stuff, and uh, glad Elijah's hooked us up with you uh, here in Columbia. We'll talk to you down the line, man. Have fun this weekend. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Bye. That's Mitch Light, the athletic. That's how you follow him, too. Mitch Light. Good stuff. They got to come back. That's right. They don't stay out forever. They don't. Uh, what's going on at the SEC meetings? Give you an update as we return.